Hi everybody, Stu AG6AG. Today I'm going to do an unboxing, setup, and testing of a discone antenna. This antenna is brand new to me. I have never played with a discone antenna. Uh, so we're going to get a little history about it. We're going to talk about how it goes together. We're going to talk about why you would want to use it. And hey, guess what? Uh, we're going to run it through its paces set it up on the VNA, run some testing with transmitting, and just all in all, try to give it a good go through. So with that, let's, oh, you know what? Please, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below. You'll get notified of my new videos. Also, if you like any of my videos, hit that like button, will ya? It really helps get my videos out in front of more people. Um, oh, and don't forget, questions or comments, put them right down there below. Thank you much, and on with the show. Well, let's talk a little bit about discone antennas. First off, I really knew nothing about them before I jumped into this uh, uh, concept of getting one set up and testing it out. Uh, just a little history. A discone antenna is a version of a biconical antenna. Uh, what they do with this is they actually remove one of the cones and replace it with a disc, typically the uh, driver element. Uh, it was invented in 1945 by a gentleman by the name of Armig Kandonian. Uh, Boy, I have a real problem with that. Uh, it's actually considered part of the dipole family and is a vertically mounted antenna, and it's also vertically polarized. It's extremely wide-banded. I mean, this thing can operate in VHF, UHF, and even SHF uh, frequencies and do it really, really well across all of it. Um, its primary use is typically used as a receive antenna, uh, used for scanners, used for uh, military applications where they want to scan a wide area of uh, frequencies, but only want to use one antenna. But it also can hold its own as a transmitting antenna as well. And although the gain of the antenna is quickly outmatched by a well-designed vertical in the same size range, uh, it really has such a wide area of transmit that it's really hard to justify not trying one of these antennas out. Um, and this antenna design, by the way, is extensively used by the military uh, in all the service branches. So I'm going to give you an example over here. This is actually a biconical antenna, um, and really uh, it's could be a sheet metal cone on both sides. What we're actually doing here is we're, we're using just uh, probably 8 to 12 elements to make up that cone shape. And, but that's just fine because radio waves don't know the difference anyway. Um, now, here's the concept of taking that biconical uh, antenna and turning it into a uh, disc cone antenna right, where you change the top cone over to a disc. And this is a great example of using it with uh, uh, an actual disc and cone metal-shaped object. Uh, for our particular experiments today, we're going to use the standard disc cone antenna design with a vertical element. Um, they can have vertical elements. They cannot have vertical elements. I have seen them both ways. They are marketed both ways. Um, my assumption, and this is an assumption, that the vertical element may assist in transmit uh, ranges, but don't take my word for that. Let your research show you where you're going, okay? Um, now, this is the standard mounting point. What we have is we have our cone... Uh, elements and we also have our uh, disc elements up on the top and if you notice there's an insulator between them and that insulator is designed so the center conductor on the coax goes to the top flat disc and the shield goes to the cone 
okay? And of course, I don't have that vertical element in this yet, but I wanted to show this to you. Throughout my unboxing, I call them radials. The top ones technically aren't radials. They're technically um, driver element antennas. Uh, so just keep that in mind, okay? Now, this particular antenna I got uh, from a company called RNL. Uh, RNL, I use them all the time. I'm very happy with them. I'm going to give them a free plug here because I have to tell you, uh, they have the stuff that I like to play with. And they have it at a good price. And their shipping is pretty reasonable. Uh, you know, it's not Amazon, no free shipping, unless the object is something they're really trying to move quick or something small. Uh, but again, um, I really like this company. And this, uh, the antenna we're going to be evaluating is the Jetstream JTD2. Uh, and this antenna, if you look down there, it's 25 to 1300 megahertz disc cone. Uh, transmit is 144-220-440 uh, and 900-1200 megahertz, okay? What a broad range, right? Uh, now, I will say that uh, the antenna itself uh, is not necessarily complicated to put together, but it's got a lot of pieces. Uh, and there are some nuances that, uh, you know, we want to talk about after we go through the unboxing, assembly, and testing, uh, such as, you know, you may want to use some Loctite on some of the items that you're screwing in here. Uh, and uh, as always, make sure all the parts are in the package. Uh, so, uh, and a lot of times you'll find parts that aren't necessarily screwed into the right place. They're just loose in the package. So, uh, keep an eye out for that. Anyway, uh, with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the unboxing and, for goodness sakes, the testing on this disco antenna. Well, all right, let's go ahead and get this thing open. Like I said, the box is 36 inches in uh, length. I don't know how many pieces this has or what kind of tools I'm going to need to put it together. So, you're seeing this the first time with me. How exciting, huh? So, let's see here. Uh, let me pop one more side here. This thing's just going to pop open kind of like a folded up little item here. Okay, well, there is my receipt, and, and RNL always sends me a sticker, which is really cool. Uh, you know, something you can put in your shop or whatever, just to remind everybody that uh, uh, you do use them. I've had great luck with uh, RNL and uh, continue to use them. For pretty much all the stuff that I purchased for amateur radio. Well, okay, there it is. So, pop this all the way out, get rid of this box, we'll set it right here. You know, a lot of pieces, but doesn't look that complicated. And again, um, whoa, there we are. I'm going to try to get this in shot so you can see the label before I open it. And there it is, the Jetstream JT-D2 disc cone type antenna. And we are looking 25 to 1300 megahertz. And there's instructions in here. And if the camera shakes a little bit, it's because I've got my dogs in here with me and they're helping me shoot this. And oh, well, I don't know. Is she out of shot? I gotta look. Is she out of shot? No, that's my little girl, Elsie. She is a black lab. And uh, 
We also have a mail. Henry, you get it? LC and Henry. Anyway. Okay. Wow. Alright. I gotta really be careful I don't lose anything here. That little, I don't know if you saw that, but that little booger right there kind of fell out of the bag all by itself. Let's see if we can see where that is. I bet ya. I'm just looking at this. I don't see anything missing. Doesn't mean it's not used someplace else. And that's kind of cool right there. So that is, that's the base of the antenna. All right. Um, so maybe this is an extra, but, oh, or maybe not. So there is an empty hole right there in the top. You know, if you've, I'll be darn, <laughs> yeah, and that would make sense that it was for this part of the antenna, because this part of the antenna was just sitting loose like that. All right, well, I got it screwed in there at least, so I'm not going to lose it now, hopefully. My next project is to read the instructions so we're gonna go ahead and shut the camera off a little bit for a little bit and I'm gonna read the instructions to see what's going on be right back okay well after a brief reading of the instructions it's fairly apparent that I'm gonna to make this easier. I'm actually gonna need to uh, let me do this so I can see my shot. I'm actually gonna need to get this mounted somehow. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to come up with an inch and a quarter or something outside the diameter here, and then uh, place that in some place I can mount. So I am gonna go ahead and run over to my uh, my shop and see what I can grab to get this mounted and go from there. Uh, so, again, what will only be seconds for you will probably be about an hour for me. So I'll be back. All right, so here is my setup. I have my tools right here and <clears throat> The two Allen wrenches came with the antenna. Uh, this little array of stuff over here, I set up a long time ago with the most basic stuff, like I got a 10 millimeter wrench and I've got a um, 5 16 a couple uh, crescents and a Phillips screwdriver, and they all sit on this carabiner thing. And yeah, uh, I have all the components for the antenna. Come on, autofocus. Uh, that I'm going to be putting on here as well as the instructions. So, and then I have my antenna set up on this little tripod here just to make it easier for me to work on. And let me hone in on this a little bit. I just created this little uh, uh, mass type assembly that I could use to quickly deploy it. Uh, also, I want to build it on this. I would never uh, deploy this on this little bitty tripod because I think it's going to weigh too much for it to be out in the wind. Uh, I have a bigger tripod I'm going to test with. But for what I'm doing right now, this is at a chest height for me. It makes it easier for me to do the assembly. So with that, let me get the uh, camera back on the tripod and go to stationary mode and we'll start trying to put this together. Uh, not sure how this is going to work so we'll just give it a shot. Alright, well we know that the best way to start is at the beginning. 
and uh, that's what we're going to do. So, it basically tells me to screw in the eight small radials across the top here, and then the other eight, the eight that come down there, make sure that this is all assembled and get it in the air. It looks pretty straightforward, at least from their instructions. So, let me go ahead. I'm going to grab the eight small radials, and these are them. They're basically uh, just nut-backed here. Uh, I'm going to screw the retaining nuts all the way up on them before I stick them in there. Uh, and then we can rotate them back out to tighten them up so they don't come out anymore. They mentioned that this is not a portable antenna. Uh, so, yeah, as far as that goes, uh, they're probably right. I think the size of this is going to be prohibitive. Um, and with all of the radials and the rest of the stuff, to deploy this uh, out in the field would take a bit of time. And I don't know if that's something that we want to go through. So I'm just going to start screwing these on. And you can see now why I use this little setup that I have, because I'm not afraid if the uh, antenna turns. And we're just hand tightening them in. And you know what, if you don't want to watch the, this, just fast forward through it. We're going to get to the point where we go outside on a real tripod and we're going to check the uh, uh, SWR and all that and then eventually we're going to go into uh, uh, the uh, oh, whatchamacallit into uh, hooking a radio to it and actually seeing how it works so uh, anyway uh, but if you like watching this kind of stuff then hang out I was curious why they wanted me to do the top ones first, and now I kind of understand, because if I do the bottom ones, I think it would be harder to get in here to do this, and this is much easier, and these aren't going to be in the way of the bottom ones, so, uh, yeah. And just about got all these in. So, everything's held together, by the way, with uh, Allen's pretty much. So, should be fairly straightforward. I'm going to go to my handy dandy little carabiner tool thing. And these, I believe, are going to be up. Oh, they're not 5 16 When you look at that, they're smaller than that. So, that's something to keep in mind. So,. Let me grab my little crescent and see if I feel okay about using this to tighten these up. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is uh, probably not what I want to use. So I am going to go grab what I believe might be a 7 or a 6 millimeter wrench and I will be right back. Well, Alright, I am back with a 7 millimeter wrench. And I'm just going to snug these, right? Nothing worse than cranking something down so hard to strip it, especially with this machine stuff, right? And I don't know if I'm going to be pulling this back apart or not either. I mean, if I got to transport it someplace, right? We're just going around till we have them all snug. See how much easier this is with the wrench? Right? Much easier. There we are. Okay. All right. Now it's telling me I got to do all the ones in the box. So there are a couple interesting ones here that are actually threaded on both sides and I am assuming that's for these right here so for right now we'll go ahead and I'm gonna raise this up a little bit so I can kinda get a better look at the bottom there we go 
and uh, I am going to adjust the camera here. Now the, I'm going to do the ones that have threads on both sides first, uh, just because I'm thinking that they're supposed to be 180 degrees off from each other. At least that's according to the picture. It doesn't say that, or it doesn't even talk about these uh, these second elements. So uh, ah, we'll go ahead and get these tightened up right here, like so. All right. Now you notice, see, I've got this higher than my eyes. <laughs> Hopefully for good reason. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the rest of these right here. So I also got to probably plan to make sure when I get this together, I can get it out the door, huh? That's a, another thought. I got all these dogs around my feet. Oh, but I love my puppies. They are just wonderful little puppies. Always so helpful, or at least trying to be. Hey, this is this is starting to look like an antenna, huh? So interestingly enough, this is pretty good sized. I mean, I really am kind of. I think once I get those bottom elements on there, it's uh, it's going to need to get taken somewhat apart to transport. But that's all right. Okay, we just about got all these on. You really got to work at not... Uh, not cross-threading these, obviously. There's not a lot to building this stuff. There really isn't, for the most part. Where you start getting into trouble is when the uh, uh, when something's not right with the parts or something like that, and you have to do an adaptation. You know that kind of stuff. The trick here too is not to force anything. You know, nothing should have to be forced. Okay, so. Here are the bottom portions of these. Let me make sure that that's going to be in the angle of the camera. Now we're going to put on the little bottom sections here. There's two of them, one for each side, as I said. And it has, has another requirement for a wrench here. Ooh! Now, my, uh, there we go, my 516s work. By the way, uh, for those of you that don't work with this kind of stuff all the time, 516s is um, the same as 8mm, so you can kind of bank on the fact that a 5 sixteenths is a good thing to have around whenever you're working with antennas. They use that a lot. Okay, so, well, all right. Now, at the top half of this. So, huh. 
So this thing's need, going to need to go outside because top to bottom, it's exceeding the uh, eight foot ceiling here. So, hmm. Well, good to know. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video and we're going to take this outside and we're going to get it sort of up in the air and get this last top part on and we'll go from there. Talk to you in a bit. So there it is in all of its glory. It's now on a real mast. There's Elsie. What a great little dog she is. And out there, of course, is Henry. Can't do one without the other. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, put this on a SWR meter and see what we have to start with. All right, well, here we are at 146 megahertz at 1.3. So we can sneak down a little bit. Let's drop down to up oh, 142. Actually, yeah, everything looks pretty good. All the way up to 148. I'm really happy with that. Let's, uh, let's take a glance at... 70 centimeters since we're close to it right now. So if I go down here to 420 at the bottom, yeah, two to one? Yeah, I can live with that. And it just drops down from there. I mean, that actually is looking pretty good. That is usable. All right, let's take a look at 220. Uh, a little higher. I think that's still usable. I think I'd be okay with that. So, 223 is what we typically use for digital on 220. 1.9, I mean, I feel safe using that. That's not bad. Well, okay, so this is the two meter amateur radio band. And you know what? Wow. That's really good. So I don't have any worries transmitting on two meters on this. All right, so yeah. Um, hmm. 220 band. You know what? It's under two. I could transmit on this. I'd feel comfortable with that. So, we know that 1.25 meters is usable. Let's go for the whole Chihuahua here and let's take a look at 70 centimeters. Well, you know what? You can't argue with that. That's the best, uh, well, not the best, but that SWR is pretty much equal to uh, the uh, two meter band, right? The 220 is up, still under two. Um, you know what? Why don't we try the 1200 band? I just want to see. Let's see how uh, this uh, little unit here handles it. Well, kind of makes me want to get a 1200 megahertz uh, radio to play with. So, wow, there you have it on that. All right. So let's put a two meter radio on this thing and see what it does. All right, well, uh, let's, uh, let's try a well-known simplex channel out here in uh, Ventura County, see what we get. Uh, CQ two meters, CQ two meters. This is Alpha Golf 6 Alpha Golf. Uh, CQ for a radio check from AG6AG, any station. AG6AG, AB6CT, Newberry Park. Ah, Norm, thank you so much for coming back to me. Um, how's my signal, sir? Hi, Stu. Oh, you sound really good. Sound good, full quieting, uh, very good audio, nice and strong. Sounds fine. Yeah, I think our distance is probably, I'm going to guess, around six miles, seven miles. That sound about right? Yeah, I'm over by the mall. Uh, yeah, it's not very far. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe six at the most. Probably even a bit shorter than that, but uh, I never actually measured it. 
But sounds really good, perfect for simplex. Really good to get back and forth like this. Ah, good. Fine. All right, I am going to go ahead and QSY over to Sulfur. Uh, that is probably the... Uh, uh, I usually can get into that by uh, base antenna, so let me see if I can open that up, and uh, we'll go from there. Do you have Sulfur in your radio? Uh, yeah, which one are you talking about? Uh, 145-200. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I have it. I probably don't get into it too well, but I can switch over there just in case I can... I can do it, or we can go back and forth, but yes. Sounds good. I'm going to QSY over there. Uh, it's channel 9 in the uh, ACS ARES uh, frequency list for Ventura. And uh, I'm just going to sign uh, there, and if uh, uh, you hear me, come on back. And if not, well, I'll assume uh, that uh, either I'm not getting in or you're not getting in or you're not hearing me. <laughs> anyway, we'll give it a shot. AG6, AG, QSY to Sulfur. Okay, very good, Stu. I'll uh, switch over. AB60. Alpha Golf 6 Alpha Golf is listening on Sulphur. Hello, Stu. AG6AG, AB60T, AB can you copy? Well, Norm, I've got you full quieting into the machine. You sound great. different radio and a different antenna, so sometimes it's iffy. Well, anyway, very glad to uh, meet you back over here. Ah, oh, copy that. I've dropped my power a little. How's my signal? Still okay. Still okay. Might be a little bit of white noise in the background there, but you're getting into repeater holding it. Audio is good, so you're fine. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think I've got the data I need. We're going to go ahead and uh, try to get uh, some stuff published here. And uh, thank you so much for helping me test out this uh, Discord, uh, Discord, <laughs> uh, Discone antenna uh, for uh, uh, amateur radio. And uh, I'm actually very impressed on uh, what it's doing. So uh, considering the price and the price difference between other tri-band antennas. Uh, anyway, with that, uh, Norm, thank you. AB6ET, AG6AG. Uh, talk to you soon. Okay, very good, Stu. Thanks for uh, the uh, chat. I'll look forward to talking to you later. If anything else comes up, let me know. AG6AG, AB6ET. And so it goes. Okay, there she is in the air. You know, from top to bottom, I'm estimating this thing at about, oh man, I'm going to say nine feet. Uh, that includes, of course, the extensions going all the way down at the bottom, the slightly larger ones there. Um, is this going to be portable? I don't know. Good question. Uh, I'll let you know after I try to move it the first time. Well, so let's talk about breakdown. Um, right up here, I've got this yeah, completely broken down. And um, yeah, it fits in the car. Uh, I actually ended up taking off the driver, that, that vertical element. And uh, so it fit in the car a little bit easier. But the reality of it is that it will break down reasonably quickly. There's a total of 17 things you got to take apart. Uh, and uh, my real concerns with this are fairly normal. I'm concerned about the threads and uh, damaging the threads from putting things together and apart over and over and over again. Um, and that, you know, if I'm doing it, I know that I'm snugging it, uh, you know, enough, but not too much to damage the threads and things like that. Um, if I've got someone that's helping me out there, um, you know, some, some people really over tighten things and they actually over and over and over again, over tightening bolts or nuts or whatever damages the threads. So, that's the one downside. I don't know how I could move it without disassembling it. Uh, but, you know, from that takeaway, it's not that big a deal. Setup time, probably about the same amount of time for me to set up 
two or three of my ham sticks for each app. So it's not a huge amount of time to set up. And I will tell you that that little cheap little uh, tripod that I use to assemble with makes it easy to get it set up and torn down. It puts it at eye level. You're not trying to balance it someplace. You're not trying to stand up on a ladder to get to a higher mast. So with all that said, uh, it is usable as portable. Probably not as fast to set up as uh, a regular vertical VHF UHF multipan. Anyway. Well, there you go. The disc cone antenna. Um, I give this four out of five stars. Uh, maybe even push it up to four and a half out of five. It really does well. Uh, I was surprised about how well it transmitted. I was surprised at how legitimately broadband it is. Um, now, I bought this to take out in the field. That's why it's only four or four and a half, because it is extremely complicated to set up and take down. Um, I shouldn't say complicated. It's cumbersome. Uh, this is an antenna that uh, has to be on a mast all the time. You can't set this thing down on the ground assembled and not expect to damage some of those elements. So um, that's a downside. However, you know... To be able to stick one antenna up and for me to be able to run 2 meters, 1.25 meters, and 70 centimeters all on that same antenna, that's, that's a win. And uh, I would recommend it to my friends just as I'm recommending it to you folks who are my online friends. Anyway, with that, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, my name is Stu, AG6AG, and oh, please... Don't forget to subscribe. I know I ask that a lot, but it really gets the video in front of more people. And if you liked it, give me a like. Any questions or comments, make them down below the video. And for now, again, this is Stu AG6AG, and I hope to hear you out there on the air. 73, everybody.